Hello, everyone. Welcome to eBiz Chat, where it is all about business. My name is Rick Zanotti, and I'm joined by Dr. Susan Nash. In studio, Harold Muviati is our video producer. And once again, we have our most respected, venerable economist. He is Dr. Ed Stewart. He's joining us for I don't know how many visits he's been on. He's, he's a regular. And uh, we love having him on. There's always good information coming forth. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation. Visit us at www.relatecasts.net. Thanks. And we are back, and in that central position of power and knowledge, we've got Dr. Ed Stewart. How are you doing, Ed? Great, great. I'm celebrating my bachelor's and master's alma mater, University of Houston Cougars, in the in the final four. Hmm. Um, so that's the that's the reason for the hat, and I'm. Uh, a proud cougar, as well as a sooner. But uh, right now, I'm I'm cheering for the Cougars. They they play on Saturday. They play the Baylor Bears. Hmm. Uh, when one of your Los Angeles teams, Rick UCLA, they play huh. Gonzaga. Yep. And the other in the other semifinal. So should be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. You see, go Cougars. Cougar. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. And well, I'm, so that's I'm old. Go ahead, Susan. Oh, that's exciting. But anyway, are you planning to to watch all the games? Oh yes, I've been I've been watching them them, them all. Um, Susan, you're much too young to remember this. Rick probably is too young also. But in 1968, the University of Houston played UCLA. UCLA was led by a a, a center by the name of Lou Alcindor, mm -hmm. who eventually changed his name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yep. The University of Houston was led by the Big E, Elvin Hayes. And on January 20th, 1968, they played a, a game in the Astrodome. Number one, UCLA versus number two, University of Houston. There were 53,000 people in the Astrodome. Mm -hmm. I was one of them. Uh, and it was the first live broadcast of a, of a regular season NCAA game. And it was the first game that Dick Enberg was the uh, announcer uh, who recently yeah. passed away, but that's mm -hmm. how he started his his um, his career. And it's um, one of the one of the hallmarks of University of Houston basketball um, history and history in the in in the Houston area and the, the Astrodome, which is on its way to I don't know being mothballed or <clears throat> knocked down or something like that. But, oh, they are going to uh, knock it down. Probably, um, they're still arguing about what to what to do with it. Uh, it's still there, but there's nothing hmm. in it but probably a couple of rats and some pigeons. Did yes. they, what, which, what did they rebuild? They rebuilt a different stadium, right? Well, they built an, a a new stadium right next to it. I think it's called NRG Stadium yeah, now. Yeah. It's where mm -hmm. the Houston yes. Texans mm -hmm. play. It's a huge uh, stadium mm -hmm. with a retractable roof hmm. um, and. It's either called NRG Stadium or Reliant. They changed it from okay. one to the other. You can't keep up, Rick, with all these corporate no. names and what they, you know, yeah, um, what the Lakers play in and the and the new stadium in Los Angeles that I don't, uh, uh, you know, it's some, SoFi, I think. Oh yeah, SoFi, yeah, yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, it's some sort of um, financial institution, but I really wasn't yeah. very familiar with them. Right. Yeah. So anyway, that's the. The short history of why I have the U of H uh, yeah, hat on. Yeah, I didn't realize and, Dick Enberg, that was his very first. That was his very first broadcast. Yeah. 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 He was a young, I think he was out of Los Angeles because they I think brought. So. Yeah. They brought the whole crew, the TV crew, the production people, <laughs> um, came with UCLA. The, yeah, came with right. the Bruins yeah. uh, team I, to play in Houston. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was only 14 then. Ah. Okay. 14. We had just I was a little. To, we had just moved to LA about a year ago. Yeah, I was an undergraduate at the University of Houston, and basketball was a big a big deal then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So, I mean, so in terms of spectator sports, do you watch the Westminster Dog Show at all? <laughs> no, Susan. We were talking before the 
podcast started about the pet industry and pet foods and the pandemic and so forth. I'm the oldest of four siblings, and I'm the only person that's not an animal person, right? My my sister in Houston has a golden or golden retriever dog and a Russian blue cat. Hmm. My brother in Denver has two cats, Zorro and Nico. And my sister in Montana has two dogs, um, Toto and Suki, and two <laughs> cats, Cowboy and, and Scout. So huh. I'm very familiar <laughs> with pets. I just don't have any, right? Yeah, so we were talking about... The, the, well, I have, a, I have a stock tip, although I think it's a, as most of my stock tips, it's a bad one. But um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, if you want to, if, okay, if you if I re recommend something, sell short. But at any rate, <laughs> it's chewy dog food or chewy uh -huh. you know, manufacturers of dog food. And I was listening to a, 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 a an interview with their CEO, and he was talking about how remarkable their growth was. And I looked at their stock price. It's gone up, but then it's gone back down. But he thinks that, of course, he says that they just can't keep up with the ingredients for their dog foods. And, and so we were talking about how the pandemic has really affected um, the dog food manufacturers and also, as you were mentioning, pet toys. So do, mm -hmm. do, what, do you, what do you have to say about that? So your Chewy recommendation, you, you would tell people they're not barking up the wrong tree if they buy that <laughs> stock? <laughs> and actually, well, actually, actually, my, my um, broker about a year ago, maybe more than a year ago, uh, one, of the, one of the newer stocks in my portfolio is Zoetis, Z-O-E-T-I-S, and they're solely pet medication they're a pet mm -hmm. pharmaceutical company <clears throat> yep. um and um there's money in in dog and cat food but rick and susan there is real money in pet care uh, oh there is and it's very and it's very oh inflated yes exactly um and we've talked about this before, Rick, that in, in, in the last recession, the 08, 09 recession, mm -hmm. um, there were people that cut back on food for their children, but they didn't cut back on food for their pets. No, they right? even fed um, the kids to the pets, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah something <laughs> like that, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's not too much of an exaggeration. So I, I think, and I had an idea with my nephew and my and my sister, that we would build a, an ETF or a mutual fund solely of pet-related um, companies, and right? You'd Either be, pet you'd be food, a billionaire. pet you'd medication. Be a, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think that would be. Uh, I still think that would be a good idea. Well, I'll, I'll give you but, an example. We we have yeah. a colleague. She's an older female colleague, and she started having like a cough or something. Uh, so mm -hmm. like like gagging and so we took her to right. pet emergency because she's been gagging a little bit but this time it was like two and a half hours straight okay she went to emergency and they said well she's got a cough go take her to your vet because she's not that badly off but they gave her uh for a hundred bucks uh something like 20 capsules or tablets of hydrocodone yeah, yeah. which i don't know what that costs for humans but it's an expensive yeah. and, it's, and it's an opiate yes. i think uh, yes, and they use right. it for cough. They use it. For, I didn't realize it was also oh. a cough suppressant. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And I was going, that's a hundred bucks. And then our vet gave her thirty day supply for a little over a hundred dollars. I was going, oof, that's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. That, uh, and right. that's the dogs, dog medicines and foods and everything are much more expensive than they used to be. Yeah. Well, and, I know that. And one of the, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the, one of the yeah one of the examples in the one of the advanced microeconomic theory books I use talking about substitution of supply. Um, in, in, if you go to veterinary school, you essentially can specialize in either large animals, which means mm. you take care of farm animals or yeah. small animals, which means you take care of pets. Mm -hmm. And there is a shortage these days of large animal vets because everybody <laughs> that's going into veterinary school is going where the money is, which right. is to, pet care and so yeah. farmers in places like wisconsin and indiana and illinois can't 
can't find vets that will take care of their cows or their pigs or hmm. whatever because all of the vets coming out are taking care of Fifi and Fido and and Suki and whatever. Yeah. Huh. Um, so, well, and I, I, I don't know. It seems to me, I'm not a pet person, but it seems to me that's not an industry that's going to go away anytime no. soon. At the, mm -mm. at the pet care. No. And also it has to do with the aging of the population. You know, the empty nesters and old folks and whatever. I, I just got off the phone with my mom. Um, don't tell her that I broadcast this, but um, she in 15 days, she turns 96. Right? Wow. And she and she lives by herself, except she doesn't live by herself. because She has Jack, who's a little uh, wire haired mm -hmm. carrier. Um, and Jack is her pride and joy that, you know, she walks two or three times a day and He's her constant companion, and oh, that's, uh, great. That, that's not <laughs> going to change, great. right? No. Well, that's a really good point. And then, you know, we talk about, we talked a little bit about people needing companions of uh, during COVID as well as as they yeah. get older. But then there's also the, the fact that there's, you know, a lot of, there's still a lot of emotional support animals. And yeah, right. you can't get the miniature donkey, but most people don't want a miniature hmm. donkey. They no. want a cat or a dog. Okay, if you want a miniature donkey, you can get a Great Dane and put a ears on him, and you know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know who poops more—the Great Dane or the donkey. I mean, <laughs> uh, right. But we well, you know. Speaking of all that, you know, we've got the market rising for dog food, the market rising for this, for that. There's so many people predicting the market is going to crash. You know, and the market is not right. the economy, but a lot of people think the market is the economy or is the, right. the signal of things going badly. I mean, the market's fairly well gamed, so it depends what you want out of the economy. But what do you think? I mean, at one point, we're, we're, what did we hit, 40,000 not long ago? It's like, where are we going with this? Um, at one point, we're way past the point of just collapsing what's going to happen well I, I i think i mean to be relatively conservative i i think the market eventually will have some kind of correction mm -hmm. one of the things i one of the things i look at for the market and, and you're, you're you're so right rick i think it's very good that you emphasize the stock market is not the economy no. and the economy is is behind the stock market. The stock market is yeah. a leading indicator, a predictor, or whatever. Um, the, the economy still has a long way to a long way to go. We've still mm -hmm. got at least 10 million people unemployed that were employed um, a, a year ago, um, and it probably is the case that the stock market in general has gotten a little bit ahead. I said I was about to say one of the one of the uh, indicators that I pay a, pay a lot of attention to is Robert Schiller's um, cyclically adjusted price uh, earnings ratio, CAPE. It's now hmm. owned by Standard and & Poor's. Um, and essentially what it is, is it's a, the price earnings ratio, but it's adjusted for inflation and the stage of the economy. So um, right now it's at, a, it's at a pretty high level. It's about, I think the last time I checked yesterday, it was around 38 or 39. And it's average somewhere in the mid twenties to the thirties. Now, the only the only saving grace and why I don't think that there's any crash coming is that it's nowhere near what the market was in two thousand before the the big dot com uh, crash and mm -hmm. the Enron scandal and and yeah. um, WorldCom and all of those other. I don't think there are any of those out there. Um, waiting to 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 blow up the, the the stock market but i would think that in the next couple of years the stock market will retreat a little bit um but a, a little bit maybe five percent ten percent in hmm. which case it might be time to to buy some stock but so, so you're pretty uh, bullish still on the market yeah and the other okay. and the other thing is 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 the tina effect t-i-n-a there is no alternative uh, uh. <laughs> what else? Are you, you know, yeah. what are you what are you gonna what are you gonna buy? You're not gonna buy uh, bonds because interest rates eventually will go up, and which means bond prices will go down. So you're not gonna do that. Um, 
we've talked before, Rick, I, I wouldn't be a person who's buying much of real estate, you know, commercial real estate. You don't want to buy shopping centers or office mm-hmm. buildings or or even urban, you know, high rise developments um, anytime soon, because all of those prices because of the pandemic mainly are, you know, not in not in in good shape and not going to have any price growth in the next two or but, three but years. Know, it's interesting you say that because you know who's been buying old buildings and, and shopping centers is Bill Gates and several others are buying them in droves. Um, what's his name? Um, from Amazon. Bezos. He's been buying. Bezos, yeah. They're buying tons of, of either abandoned or shut down. They said about 25% of the malls in the U.S. closed down last year. Right. And and Bezos wow. has bought a lot of them, and they said what they're doing is Amazon says they're going to make regional and more localized distribution centers out of them, mm-hmm. which is right. pretty clever. Right. Uh, right, and it's it's something that if you have if you have thirty or forty billion dollars now, Rick, you and I don't. Susan <laughs> might have that kind of money, yeah. and you can wait. <laughs> you know, you can wait ten or twenty years for that to for that to pay off. Um, and I think what. What Rick, you're focused on is what do kind of middle class people mm-hmm. with a little bit of wealth what should they be doing? And and yeah. and my kind of fallback position is there there really isn't much of an alternative to the no. to the stock market for the average investor. Um, you know, not the person who has billions of dollars that can afford to take big gambles like like that, right? And well, yeah, and that's I would a good stay point. Out of, I, would, I would stay out of things like gold and, and Bitcoin. If I had a couple of billion dollars, I'd probably put a million dollars into Bitcoin, assuming that it's going to turn to zero. And, hmm. and you know, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be upset that much. But, you know, it's um, funny how many people love Bitcoin. I, I don't know. I have this. I've never invested in it. I thought about it and I keep thinking at any given point, what happens if any given government yeah. takes it out or or any any given code guy hmm. who's and it's always it's guys right yeah code guy who sets it up they always say well it's self-governing and you can't get into it what well as as my uh professor of econometrics and and statistics a heavy computer user, user at the university of oklahoma said if it's made by a human being a human being can can hmm. um break it up I, I so thought, I thought one this of idea the, that bit that Bitcoin is yeah. never going to go, you know, whatever. No, the guys who programmed it can unprogram. It, now, right? one Bitcoin, I thought I can't remember who it was, but they actually had been gotten into. Uh, yeah, exactly. And they had to change. I forgot which one it was. It it wasn't. Uh, there was one cryptocurrency, Rick, where the guy who had the who had the who had the password died. Right? So, oh, really? so oh, you, you, had, you had your money in that uh, one. I don't know which one it was. It wasn't Bitcoin, obviously, uh, no. but it was one of those cryptocurrencies where the yep. guy who set it up, who had the who had the password, uh, died and didn't wow. leave <clears throat> didn't leave the password with anybody. Yep. So, hmm. yeah. yeah, and I, I think maybe three or four or five uh, times ago, Rick, I I said I I kind of used the Warren Buffett principle. If you can't explain what the company does, then you shouldn't probably be buying it. So hmm. Susan's emphasis on Chewy the dog food, you know what that is, right? Yep. You know who's going to buy it. You understand what the company does, you can buy it. That's why the longest position I've had in the stock market is is Starbucks, right? Because hmm. I know what it does. I go there every day. Uh, I, you know, around the world, I've been to Starbucks from Moscow to Beijing and seems like a decent company that's going to, you know, go. And, um, and Zoetis, um, when I first showed up in my portfolio, I called my sister, the, the animal, uh, expert and said, have you, do you know Zoetis? She said, oh yes, we use that at the shelter for, hmm. you know, this disease and that disease. I said, okay, yeah. I'm happy. Yep. Uh, now, and I Chicago, can't explain Bitcoin. How's Chicago, yeah. by the way, are they pretty open right now with restaurants and everything else? They're they're starting to open gradually. Uh, okay. I uh, I live in a building that has a my favorite French restaurant outside of Paris in the mm-hmm. on the ground floor, Mon Ami Gabi, and mm-hmm. there I was there 
about a week ago, and they're at 50% capacity. Oh, that's so, good. So at least you can go. They, yeah, and most of the waiters and waitresses and my favorite bartender Jordan are back at work. Um, and what they what they this particular company has done, let us entertain you. Um, all of COVID, they add on to the check. I think about a five percent surcharge to help employees and so forth. Oh, that's and, good. And you can you can. You can decline it. You can say no. I don't want to pay it. But of course, who's going to right, afford right. to eat at a French restaurant? You're not going to say, "Oh, I'm not going to." You know, I don't want to contribute five percent of the bill to the dishwashers or the busboys so they can, you know, make their rent payment. Um, so it's it's gradually opening up. Um, although, um, and I think a large number of seniors are vaccinated, but um, there's a a, a slight increase in COVID infections in my area of Chicago, the north side, the near north side, and the population that's that's getting the the infections are 18 to 39 year olds. They're the idiots who show up in in bars and at unauthorized parties and so forth. Which I wouldn't be so bad if. Well, I'm not going to say that. It, it's it's bad enough that they're getting sick, but they'll probably recover, although there's all kinds of stories about long-run effects. But it's when they go see their grandmother or their Aunt Sadie or something like that that could be a bit um, problematic. So that's the one thing that we're dealing with in Chicago is an outbreak in the, the, the north side, which is the relatively wealthy white part of town and mm -hmm. so it's not it's not uh, minorities who can't afford health care or whatever they've obviously been adversely affected and disproportionately mm -hmm. affected but but we've done or city of chicago and the state of illinois have done a pretty good job in in distributing the vaccine but now we have this 18 to 39 year old cohort that seems to um, be adversely affected right now, and how that will play out, I, I don't, I don't know. Well, but fortunately, like I, I got my, I got my second shot on Saturday, so I'm knock on, knock on wood up here. Um, I'm pretty good to go, but I'm still. Every time I go out, I'm in mask. I, I, I haven't. I know Susan goes to late night raves, you know, where there's thousands of people <laughs> taking drugs and listening to hard rock. But I, I still, I'm mostly at home listening to my Count Basie CDs and staying pretty. Uh, and my Starbucks, you have to sit outside. You can go inside to pick up mm. your coffee, but you have to, you have to sit outside. And the Julius Meinl, you can go inside and pick up your coffee, but that they still haven't opened the inside mm. of the cafe right. up, up mm. yet. Um, so well, it's moving in the right direction, but um, fortunately um, for the U.S., we seem to be getting a handle on it, but I, I just got an email from one of my best friends in Prague and Central Europe, the Czech Republic, uh, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, they're having a real serious um, out of reinf reinfection. Uh, the French just announced that they're shutting mm -hmm. schools for three weeks. Um, Brazil has had double the amount of deaths in the last week. Um, mm -hmm. And Bolsonaro is in, he's even in trouble with the military, who were kind of his main supporters. So um, maybe, Rick, that's one of the reasons, at least subconsciously, I'm kind of bullish on the U.S. economy is that um, now, relative to Europe, it's kind of changed. Six months ago, Europe was was being hailed as, well, that's the way to handle it, and the U.S. was not doing so well, and now the, the script has been a little bit flipped. The U.S. economy, there, there are little bits of signs that things are, are getting um, better, retail sales, consumer sentiment. Uh, I was talking about real estate, Rick, and... I think I talked about this the last time. The real estate prices that are going up are houses and condos in the near suburbs. Mm, Large right. people moving out of their two-bedroom apartment in yep. the city of Chicago to a three 
bedroom or four bedroom house so that they can have an office they can have you know an exercise room to put in their peloton or what right. have you so well, a, lot, a lot of that those, was driven the, well a lot of that was driven by the violence in the big cities they just said we're done we don't want to deal with it anymore some, of, was, it, some of it was some of it yeah. was yeah uh, yeah i have a question for you I, I keep hearing things about we are i think right now at about 38 trillion in our debt and and they're saying the U.S. can probably tolerate. No, it's not that. It's not that much. It's probably about 20, 25 or twenty six. You think? Okay, I was reading. The, yeah, I think that we no, could debt, tolerate the, the about debt, fifty trillion, and then after that, nobody yeah. knows. Um, I think it's probably because GDP. I have the GDP numbers for mm-hmm. twenty twenty right here. I told Harold, I, and the nominal GDP at the end of 20 or for 2020 was 20 trillion 936 oh, okay. Uh, okay. billion so about 20 trillion and the debt to GDP ratio now is about 125 percent so that means the, hmm. the debt's about 25 um, okay. trillion and um, World War two it got up to about 150 160 percent um, so um we're starting to i think that's a you bring up a good point we're starting to get to the point where we can't add a whole lot more without some consequences um and that's why the Biden administration secretary of the treasury yellen are starting to are talking about you're going to have to have tax increases to <laughs> hand it, handle the handle the debt um and uh, i have deficit figures right so one of the things that happened in the trump administration was the the debt went up the deficit and the deficit went up right the obama administration the the deficit was actually shrinking from i am looking at the numbers here from 2009 to 2016 the federal deficit went from one and a half trillion down to down to 620 billion so Obama cut the deficit in about half, and Trump took it up from 620 to, well, in in 2019, which is the last pre-pandemic, it went to almost a trillion. And for 2020, not anybody's fault, the, the, the deficit should have gone up, but the deficit in 2020 was was three trillion, uh, hmm. one, one billion. So the deficit is large. Um, yeah. And will probably stay large for this year and maybe next year but there are tax increases coming and the question is what kind of taxes um so um yeah the 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 debt is more of an issue although you don't see it yet what what right what will be a real sign that the debt is an issue is that long-term treasuries will go up in interest mm-hmm. rates and there's still and they're still close to close to zero and you'll see inflation go up and right now the the core inflation rate um, i have the cpi numbers uh consumer price index numbers less food and energy for february uh, february 2020 to february 2021 and it's 1.3 hmm. percent um and uh, we don't we don't really see that going up much uh, in the well, next okay, year, so year or so. That's true. Okay. That's true, except it, the CPI is a market basket of goods, and it doesn't have all goods. And so it, right. it, it may, and, and so we see segmented I mean, inflation, which may or may not spill over to others. So, like, for example, in real estate, like you were saying, the um, the prices have really gone up in, in the super housing, small housing, and whether or not that has an effect on the regular economy. Oh, I'm sorry, I got distracted by music. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 true. Um, and, then, and then the 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 okay, so the deficit's going up, and we cover as so we have spending bill to cover infrastructure. That a lot of that's green infrastructure, which is an interesting kind of inter- infrastructure project that will affect us in different ways than the, the traditional infrastructure that we've seen in the past. 
For example, uh-huh. with Eisenhower, did the post office construction to simulate your fiscal policy, and and then we saw a lot of the fifties interstate system, and then and of course even Trump was doing a lot of of that. But this will be different. So, I, I, what are your thoughts? Actually, actually, Trump wasn't doing anything except talking. There was no infrastructure bill or plan or whatever, right? Well, he was talking about it, yeah. It, yeah, but that's it. It's just talk, right? So what we have now is a plan. And one of the things that's, that came out in the last couple of days is the electric vehicle companies and suppliers, their stock has gone up because some of the infrastructure spending is for subsidies for electric vehicles and building mm-hmm. out the charging uh, network. Exactly. And so yeah. that's, um, that's a concrete plan, and it's um, going to Congress and uh, will have... A stimulative effects and those stimulative effects will put some pressure on inflation which is why tax increases have to come along with it mm-hmm. so rick and i being poor boys we're not going to worry much about taxes going up but rich people like you susan <laughs> may have to pay slightly higher taxes but i'm not i'm not worried about me i'm just a poor professor well i'll have to liquidate one of my yachts <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, didn't even a, I didn't even get a write on that yet. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that music means we are out of time. Mm. This went fast. It goes fast, doesn't it, Rick? It does go fast. Yeah. yeah. Not always. Sometimes yeah. it's so, but not with you. You you go fast. It's like, man. Well, it goes fast to me, quick. so that must mean I'm having fun. Yeah. You're having fun. We're having fun. Oh. Yeah, we love having you. So anyway, well, you know what? Things seem to be improving a bit, and we hope it continues. And mm-hmm. um, ah, let's hope we don't have a long summer. That's all I can say. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, a pleasure to have you on again. And I'm glad you're going to your favorite French restaurant. That that's important. Yes. That's a, that's an indicator right there. So exactly, that's how I feel. Oui. You know, I think we're getting down to fifty percent too right now. So hopefully mm-hmm. that continues. Yeah. Anyway, Ed, we will see you soon again. And Susan, again, till next week. And for all you folks watching, please subscribe and let us know if you have any feedback or want to get a hold of anybody. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you next week on EBIS Chat. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.